What's up everybody? Thursday, June 16th. Well, like I said yesterday in my video, if you listen to the video, I said that the bounce off of the Fed rate hike was not going to probably be sustained. However, and that's what happened today. We had some more selling and I'm going to explain why I think that happened and why I think what I said to you guys last week is about to come to fruition at least I hope so so let me go back to last week I said that next week meaning this week was going to be your opportunity to get in at the bottom or really uh, you know cheap uh, in terms of the market averages and stocks and the reason I said that was because you may recall I have been warning you guys of a quarterly corporate tax payment that was going to hit on June 15th and I said it would be between 70 to 80 billion it was actually like around uh, 75 billion and so that would uh, constitute a pretty big liquidity drain for the economy you know and of course uh, obliquely for the stock market now, I mean, that happened yesterday, so that's why I thought the rally from the Fed rate hike, which was basically one of those buy the rumors, sell the news, you know, everybody was relieved, they did 75 basis points, woo! Um, and today, I mean, there was nothing there to support it. And, and if you go back, which I did, the last three days, okay, so June 13th, 14th, and 15th, we've had a 95 billion tax drain over those last three days. It's been brutal again. This is like a mini April. April we had a 323 billion uh, drain because of tax filings. But again, we got this. I mean, right now, the problem right now is that you know taxes are growing so fast they're growing faster than the spending and that's why the deficit is shrinking um, so it's a problem every time we get kinda a little bit ahead in terms of the fiscal flows and you know that this going back to the swimming pool analogy every time we get back to you know where that water level is starting to rise it gets sucked right back down again but the good news is it's over for now, at least until mid-September. There's going to be no more big uh, quarterly tax payments, tax filings. You know, they're over for the year. You might get, you're going to get something again, another quarterly uh, corporate tax uh, payment in, on September 15th. You might have some tax payments uh, um, also in October. But for now, we're talking about the rest of June, July, and August. It's basically straight ahead fiscal flows. You know, we're running about 600 billion a month. I've been telling you guys that that's that's pretty good. That's at least probably um, you know 30 percent, if not more, higher than the pre-pandemic flow. And that flow was, you know, enough to keep the economy growing at two and a half percent. You know, we got the Fed uh, rate hikes to contend with, and for me, my. Um, I think the reality of that, I, I know you're not going to find this in any, in any mainstream uh, assessment uh, of the impact of rate hikes on the economy, but you know, I said they're, they're price hikes, so they're going to keep the level of inflation higher than what it otherwise would have been had we not had those hikes. But they are also fiscal operations because the government is a net payer of interest. Yesterday, I don't know if you guys listened to the whole video that I made, but I said, you know, what's, what's interesting, what's funny actually, is that by raising rates, the Fed raised rates on itself. You know, the Fed is the entity that has to pay interest on reserves. And by bumping up the rate to uh, now, you know, uh, one, was it 150 to 175, the Fed is on the hook for about 88, 90 billion uh, in interest that it has to pay on reserves. That's 80% of its annual income, which before was just transferred to the Treasury, uh, going into a black hole. That 
that 90 billion now is going into the economy. So, I mean, uh, nobody's talking about that. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you that right now. But, I mean, this is the way I look at, at interest rate adjustments. They're either price hikes or price cuts. And they're, they're fiscal operations to the extent that, you know, when you understand the government is a net payer of interest, they're either adding interest uh, income or they're, they're taking it away when they, when they cut rates. So I, you know, as far as squashing inflation, I mean, all that's nonsense. That's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, um, the main thing for me is that the, these tax drains are finally over until September, and I think we can have uh, a nice recovery. Uh, you know, the economy is unfortunately um, it's going to struggle a bit uh, in the you know in the near term. I think because more uh, from the standpoint of sentiment, I think I think the the negative, the negativity, and the bearishness will just cause businesses and people to pull back. I, I don't think there's, you know, I don't think there's a uh, there's a anything beyond that. I think it's more like sentiment is gonna is gonna impact behavior. Uh, and that could be a factor in the slowdown in the economy. Um, I mentioned oil prices yesterday where, uh, I don't know, man, I, you know, I see the producers selling into oil rally, but with the sanctions and the war, like I said yesterday, I, I just don't see a path that leads to lower prices anytime soon. Now, I could be wrong. You know, again, producers have been uh, they're still long the futures market, uh, which is a rare position for them, but they've been long the futures market since last November, but they are cutting that down. They are uh, reducing their long position, so maybe that says something. I mean, I look at this stuff every single week. The Fed has finally begun QT, but it's, it's minuscule right now. You know, they, they hardly did anything. I think it was like um, uh, you had an $8 billion drop in, in treasury holdings. It was like the first drop and I, I got to go back in years. Uh, but eight billion, it, it's like minuscule. But at the same time, they had a 20 billion increase in MBS. So their balance sheet in the week ending yesterday, their balance sheet actually went up. It actually went up by uh, 14, 14 billion, almost 15 billion. It didn't go down. So this is a slow process. But as I've been saying, it's positive uh, as it gets going because to the degree that it reduces reserve assets, you know, that just gives the banks more space on their balance sheets to add loans. It also reduces the pressure from leverage ratios, okay? It, it actually, in effect, it'll make the leverage ratio bigger, which is better for the banks. It puts them into, you know, better compliance with the Fed's own uh, regulatory guidelines. So um, that's the update for today. I, I still I'm sticking with my call from last week that this was the week midweek. I said midweek of this week would be your opportunity to buy in low. The tax drain again. Uh, the last three days, 95 billion drain. You know that just goes right into a black hole. The government's going to eventually spend that back out again because it runs deficits, but. You know, it takes a little time, like we saw in back in April through to mid through mid May. I mean, mid April through mid May, we were running with surplus. The good news is that the monthly uh, budget balance for June that's still deficit, but it went from like 164 billion down to 69 billion. I mean, in three days, it's a big hit. And I've been telling you guys this was going to happen. But if you got short hedges on, I would consider lifting them right now. I think by next week, we start to see a recovery get going. Maybe starting even tomorrow. But uh, I think uh, at least from the flows standpoint, things are looking a lot better now. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Bye.